is Isaiah Ritchie with Wood Brass and Glass. Today I have a big announcement to make in regards to, this, to the Searle Effect Generator with my help uh, from Russ Grease from rwgresearch.com. We have been able to create a, a variable wave field magnet. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you all about it. So for starters, I just want to make a shout out to Russ Grease, rwgresearch.com. I want to thank him very much for putting his time and energy into helping me bring this idea into reality. And uh, being able to produce a, a variable field wave magnet. It's amazing to look because it's unlike any other magnet really on the planet. So as many of you are aware, I've been on the Searle Effect Generator for many years, many, many years, since about 2008. Uh, I made some progress, as you can see my other videos through the years have elapsed, but I really hit a stopping point in that I had the magnets, uh, I had the resources to be able to, to build an effective demonstration. The one hurdle I was facing was putting a variable field, meaning a wave type field, onto a magnet. It's like, how in the world would you possibly do that? Because all magnets are just, when you look at film, this, all magnets run straight. They don't have variable fluxes in the field. So, I kind of almost put the project on hold because I could just effectively make a great demo. And it would just go about that far of having a nice spinning pulse magnet motor. Um, so one day I was out exercising and the idea of how to do it just came to me basically all in one moment. It wasn't exactly like a flash like Nikola Tesla describes having, but the idea just all came to me at once. Um, so I went forward. I didn't know Russ Grease at the time. I didn't really know anything about how to go about getting this done. Um, so as time went on, I ended up meeting the right folks, Russ Grease, and uh, just more ideas. But the really thing was experimenting. So I went ahead and built the jigs. Russ Grease magnetized them all for me. Just briefly go through how these rings are going to be made uh, by me in the future. And this is the device I wanted everyone to see. So quickly, uh, this is a, a coil assembly lacking the coils. Uh, they're coming down the road here. Uh, but effectively, it's, it's right in order, steel frame, this is an electromagnetic coil. Uh, twist this down, it lowers the center core in here, and the little ring magnet will be placed. It's copper. We'll be placed about right here, having these uh, hollow tubes coming out with a pattern on it. And uh, I'm getting an electro uh, a magnetizer system to hook up to this to induce the, the high voltage pulse uh, to magnetize it. These will essentially have shapes. These will essentially have shapes that fit together. Uh, how that is, because I'm going for just like a, a one peak, one valley shape, not a bunch of wiggly squiggly lines on it. It has to be organized uh, in a controlled fashion for the magnet. Um, so these will be fastened here and then up into there. And that one goes up and then it ascends up and then it comes down, as you can see. So that's the way I'm going to go about making um, the, the ring magnets in the future uh, using this system. In a second video, if you click right here, uh, I have all these, these other magnets. I'm going to give examples uh, showing them in the, in the rotating spindle jig to show the fields because these magnets were magnetized with very low levels and then really alter high levels. The high levels typically showed maybe a 2% field change, as were when you got down to uh, strengths that weren't so st strong. In, in voltage size, uh, the weave effect became much more pronounced, yet the magnet is still much usable for me for my application with joining up to the Searle uh, generator, uh, the strength-wise. Ring magnet.
These magnets are used by magicians for doing all assortments of tricks and stuff. Um, I found them on eBay and I was able to get them for a little over a dollar each. They're a great ring magnet for this project. Also for magnetizing, to be able to see if we could do any kind of little pattern into this magnet. Well, you we can. So I created a jig down here. Put the magnet into this little plastic holder. So, uh, the thing is going, the jig's on, now watch this. It wants to follow that field, and I put it in the center and it jumps it, because that field is not equal everywhere, which is fantastic. So there it is. That is the, the field rotating uh, around on the magnet. I thought this was the most impressive. Obviously the ring magnet is not, uh, it doesn't have a variable pitch when it's rotating. It's perfectly smooth. You look at that, the wave field moves. It looks to me like smoke. But it's obvious it has a pattern on it. I move the film up. Pretty cool. Now a normal magnet would look something like this. So under film, looks pretty darn normal, no fluctuations. Now they do have these notches I put into them as you can see. That was try to emulate a field of sorts before I could do the magnetizing to this ring. As you can see, there ain't nothing abnormal about this one at all. Hopefully this will show it. Kind of looks like there's a bug under there or something. Anyway, you guys probably get the idea. Oh yeah, let's do this. So what I wanted also to say is that these magnets I'm making, they are not exactly like Searle's magnets. Uh, they, they're different in that Searle uses a different technology that I'm not using to create these magnets. I'm using metal shapes and jigs. So the magnetic field matches that metal shape. With Searle's, he uses extreme high voltages. Uh, with AC-DC current and he's able to manipulate the field using that technique. Mine is much more lower power compared to his. His is basically a different technology to magnetize magnets. Mine is another technology. I don't know if mine is similar in any way to his. All I know is that with my system I got a variable, bar variable shape field in the magnets. And so I'm going to be going forward in further videos to, uh, to work with that. Looking ahead into 2016, uh, I'm going to be finishing up the first magnetizing coil system I showed earlier in this video. I'll be working on a second bigger one for the arc magnets, and then be looking also to getting the magnetizing electronics themselves, uh, high voltage, all that fun stuff. Uh, that's down the road here a ways, uh, with, if work allows. And I'd also like to ask all of you for a more catchier phrase name for these magnets. I know I came up with a variable flux field, wave field, whatever, but if anybody has any techno babble, Star Trek type kind of name for these things they can give, I, I will use that name. If I end up liking, I'll use that name um, for these magnet patterns. I'd like to thank you all for your support. Many of you have helped me in this project, uh, good encouragement, some uh, good backlash at stuff and negative comments. Everybody's appreciated here. So if you really enjoyed this video, just go ahead and click subscribe right here and uh, look forward to more, more things coming, more projects, uh, reviews here and there, and just whatever floats into my mind to take video of. 
You take care, everybody, and we'll be back soon with Wood, Brass, and Glass. Bye-bye.